Hey, good morning. I'm not really awake yet, just having my tea. But I wanted to uh, do a little demo of some Z Modeler stuff, and uh, I believe I have a request for how to do a Greek column. So, real quick, here's what I came up with. Oh, I think I got a better one than that, even. Here we go. Haven't done the tops of it, but we've got the grooves, and if we turn on the new dynamic subdiv. You can see that those scallops get really nice. And even after, uh, this is 834 points right now at this stage. Uh, and even after we applied that dynamic, it would still be only about 3,000. So that's pretty reasonable, and it'll be a lot easier to unwrap. Um, so let me show you how I went about this. So starting with a normal cylinder, um, I realize I don't need all these uh, horizontal edge loops. So I'm going to go down to initialize and I'm going to take off the vertical subdivisions. And I'm just going to put back some once I get it into Z Modeler. So initialize that by uh, make poly mesh 3D. I'm on my Z Modeler brush already. I can just pick it. And Z Modeler is contents sensitive. So as you get over an edge or a poly and you hit the space bar, you'll get different actions choosable. So right now I want to change, I'm going to get on an edge loop and change it to insert single edge loop. And I think. I want to get edge loops both at the top and the bottom and the center, so I want to turn on my symmetry, but I don't want it to just be X symmetry, because that's going this way horizontally. I want it up and down, so I'm going to turn on Y symmetry. And let's work in perspective. So get on that edge, and it, why didn't it make one underneath? Did I... Huh. Let's try one right in the center. Okay, yeah, you have to make one in the center before it'll register uh, the top and the bottom. That's because it says single edge loop. So it's not going to make two until it has the geometry to do that. So I think that's a good start. And I'm going to put another one right there and I'm holding down the mouse I can kind of slide that edge loop. So this is just sort of a placeholder to hold that crease um, this crease uh, once I get to that that stage. Okay now the other thing I didn't pay attention to is when I made the cylinder how many points did it have? Let's go back to the cylinder, initialize. It's on 32. So when I get back to the one I'm working on, I'm going to change it to radical symmetry. So that's going to be the z-axis. Turn off the y, turn on the radical. And now I'm going to turn this on up to 16. So that's half of the 32. Oop. And z is not correct. Let's try the y. Yep, it, it was the Y anyway. Okay, so I think I actually want to get rid of that center line right now. So I'm going to switch it to delete. I'm on edge mode. Let's delete that poly edge. Okay, that's because I'm going to inset every other um, of these, uh, these long vertical polygons in the center. So I'm going to go, I'm on the poly, I'm going to go to inset, and because I've got the symmetry on, I can leave it on single poly. Let's snap this to the front. Oh, turn off perspective. I might be being a little cautious about this, but I want to work on this, this very center one. And see see what I'm doing there? Okay. So it's dividing that into five and it's keeping it all quads, which is what I want. And 
um, even though I, I want it fairly close to the top these these top edges um, I also want to get it away from the other the other poly so I'll get this one right here this gap um, all right so I've got that let's try a slide this might not work so I'm on edge slide and let's just move this one up yeah, and if it does that it re gets rid of that gap well let's just do it with the move points or move edge let's see what this does yeah but then it's going back and forth let's see if I hold down shift what happens nope it stops letting me move it. So I'm going to have to try something else, which is transpose. So I'm on edge. I'm going to switch to transpose. And let's just try one edge. Edge. Click. And now I can drag my line out. But definitely make sure perspective is off if you're doing a transpose. And oh. And I can just move that up. See how nice that is. I'm holding down shift to keep it to keep it aligned. So that's what I want. And now I'm going to turn off. I'm going to go out of the move. So hit Q on the keyboard. So I'm going to click another edge. And I'm going to do the bottom one. So click the center. Hold down shift and get that nice and close. About the same. I might be getting ahead of myself, so back, clear the mask. So now I want that scallop. So I need that central line. So I'm going to do back to my edge to insert, uh, not insert, inset, insert. So single edge loop right there. So now we've got that. Oh yeah, you know what? I didn't give myself enough room there. So let's back up. Okay, I needed to move those edges up with the transpose. But not quite that far. You'll see in a second what I mean. So I'm going to move this up, but instead of taking it all the way up here, I'm going to take it to about right there to leave myself room to pull up that central point after I create that edge loop. So back to there. All right, keep it about even. That looks good. Clear the mask. Back to insert. Insert edge loop. Now I've got that edge loop. So now I'm going to use a move point. So uh, Let's just do it by brush radius and see how that treats us. So move points. Start moving that up. Hold down shift. It's not locking to the axis, so I'm going to have to use... And I can't use the infinites because that would move the other one right below it. It would move both of these if I got the right infinite axis. So I need to do the transpose on the point. And let's get off perspective, snap it. Whoop. And so bingo. Getting that little this will create that nice curve at the end of the of the groove. Whoops. Get off. Click this point. Pull this one down. Bingo. So now I've got that going on and oh looks like I messed up and I got it out of vertical when I moved that one. So I need to back up and fix that. Let's do this correctly. I must have had the viewport tilted when I did that. So transpose point. Okay. A lot of backtracking. 
Everything go. Alrighty. So. What? It's still doing that. How odd. Oh! Uh, I messed it up even further back than that, so I've got to go back. And... Let's see if I... Yeah, it was good here. Good to there. It's when I was doing those edges I messed up. Okay, a little bit. Back to transpose on the edge. Click those. Get that one going. I think part of what happened is I didn't drag the transpose off into the blank space, the end of the transpose. So let's move that up. See, now that's good. It was a little far though. A little more down. Back. Look this transpose. Pull this one down. Okay, so good we're seeing this multiple times, I guess. Okay, so now insert a single edge loop. Bingo, everything's still groovy. Now I can do the transpose point. Everything's still groovy. Whoops. There we go. So, if I turn on dynamic now, you know, th there's no scallops yet. I've just, all I've been doing is creating the geometry that allows me to do the scallop really easily. And we're going to just do transpose edge. So this is all one edge, so I'll be able to do it in one move. That's why I got rid of that center line, even though I needed it to make these uh, loops at the top and the bottom. So I'm going to click that transpose edge, and I am going to, yeah, this it should be okay. It's It's got all those symmetry lines. I can't really see it, so let's rotate it from this thing. As long as I hold, hold the click that center and hold shift I should be able to pop that in. And let's see what that did. Whoops. So there it is with dynamic. And I wish it was a little bit deeper. So go all the way back just because I can. So I could even do this with the dynamic on. It's a, It'll be a little less responsive but I should be able to see it better. Let's turn off the polyfill so I can see it as I do it and I can just mess with that as much as I need to. So. I think that gives you a sense of how you're able to do it. If I turn the uh, dynamic smooth subdivision up a couple more, we'll get some nicer, get some nicer scallops. So I think that's the basics of it. You can see how powerful Z Modeler is, and I hope you enjoy this. There will be definitely be more in the class. So please attend. Thank you.